Hi, and welcome to worship. I'm so glad that you've joined us here today. A couple of announcements before we begin our time together. First off, we're really excited to let you know that our Family Promise Host Week is coming up starting on September 6th. But due to COVID, it looks just a little different this year. While our families will not be staying with us at Abiding Hope, they will be staying at local hotels, which is good so they don't have to move around a lot. But we do, do still have some obligations as we walk with and serve our families in the community. And so we do have some financial obligations so that we can serve those families. And so we're asking for two things. First of all, to give a financial gift to Family Promise. These financial gifts will go to provide food, necessary items, personal care items, anything that those families need. And to give that, you can drop off a check at the office, but the easiest way to do it is to go to abidinghope.org backslash give. There'll be a little drop down menu. You can click on that and then select family promise. The other way that you can support our families is that you can help give quarters so that they can do laundry while they're at their stay. This is also a really cool activity for our youth and our kiddos to collect any quarters you might have lying around your house. And just as you do, if you need to drop off a check, you can also drop off those quarters at our front office. And thank you for all the ways that you support and uplift our families who are experiencing homelessness in our community. Also just wanted to remind you that we have a whole host of ministry opportunities that are gathering here on site at Abiding Hope. We have Bible studies, Grace Ways is coming back in September. We have a messy wellness series, some really awesome things. So check out your Home Connections email for more information, or you can also go to our website. And so with all those announcements now, let us begin our worship together. Let us now enter into a time of confession. Loving and merciful God, we confess to you that which causes separation, that which causes pain, that which causes distress, and that which breaks down. We confess to you our part in those things. In humility and hope, we ask for your help to do better to reconcile, to heal, to soothe, and to build up, so we may love you and our neighbor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As I stand here listening to the waters of the baptismal font, I am reminded that as children of God, there is nothing we can do to make God love us any more or any less. And in these waters where we are put to death and raised to new life, God offers a beautiful gift of grace and forgiveness, where once again we are filled with God's life and love and sent back out once again to be God's vessels of wholeness and healing. So sisters and brothers, today, receive God's gifts of grace and forgiveness and be reminded that you are a beloved child of God and God loves you no matter what.
our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also, and also with you. Let us pray. God, our home and help, when the way seems dark, when we feel disconnected, overwhelmed by grief or pain, when we feel lost, we ask at your spirit, open our hearts and our souls more fully to your presence, which is in, around, and among us at all times. May we see, may we experience the ways you, O oh God, show up in the very ordinary and everyday spaces and places of our lives. And it's in those places where you invite us, you draw us to not only rest in your presence, but also to be your vessels of forgiveness and grace, healing and wholeness in our world. So God, here in this space, we ask you to open our hearts, open our minds, open ourselves so that we may fully live as your children in the world, so that all may experience real life. All these things we ask. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. In holy baptism, God graciously liberates us from sin and death by joining us to the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are born children of a broken humanity. In the waters of baptism, we are reborn children of God and inheritors of God's promise of abundant life. From God's perspective, we actually do die in baptism, dying to everything that threatens to rob us of the life that God intended for us so that we might rise to new life in Christ. By water and the Holy Spirit, God makes us members of the body of Christ, the church. As we live immersed in Christ, we grow into being the joyful, hopeful, loving, and faithful people of God who delight in doing God's will. Who presents Miles to receive the gift of holy baptism? In Christian love, you have presented Miles for holy baptism. Empowered by the Holy Spirit, you are to see that he is immersed in the community of Jesus and its worship of God. You are to teach him the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, and the Ten Commandments. As he grows as a child, you are to place in his hands the holy scriptures and provide for his formation as a child of God so that he may grow to bear witness to God's restorative work throughout the world and live as a disciple of the risen Christ. Do you all promise to fulfill these obligations? People of God, do you promise to support Miles and pray for him in his new life in Christ? We do. We do. The Lord be with you. So with you, let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. Blessed are you, O God, for in the beginning, your voice thundered over the waters as you called forth life in which you took delight. You continue to water the mountains and send springs into the valleys to refresh and satisfy us and all living things. Through the waters of the flood, you carried those in the ark to safety. Through the sea, you led your people Israel from slavery to freedom. In the wilderness, you nourished your people with water from the rock, and you brought them across the river Jordan to the promised land. At the river, your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By the baptism of Jesus' death and resurrection, you have set us free from all threats and perils, including sin and death, and opened us up to abundant life. In obedience to the risen Christ, we have been called to make disciples of all people, baptizing in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Pour out your Holy Spirit, the power of your living word, that he who is washed in the waters of baptism may be given new life. To you be given praise and honor because in your vision and promises, there is no longer Jew or Greek, no longer slave or free, no longer male or female, but through Christ Jesus, we are all one in you in unity of the Holy Spirit. 
one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. I ask you to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, reject sin, and confess the faith of the church, the faith in which we baptize. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God? We, we renounce, renounce them. them. Do you renounce the powers of this world that rebel against God? We, we renounce, renounce them. them. Do you renounce the ways of sin and evil that draw us from God? We, we renounce, renounce them. them. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe, I believe in, in God, God the, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. All right, Miles, are you ready, buddy? All right. In obedience to the command of our Lord Jesus Christ and on behalf of the church, we baptize you, Miles Richard DeMarco, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, that through water and the Holy Spirit, you give your daughters and sons new birth, cleanse them from sin, and raise them to new life. Sustain Miles with the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. Amen. Miles Richard DeMarco, child of God, you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Amen. Let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Amen. Amen. Let us welcome the newly baptized. We, we welcome, welcome you as a brother into, into the Lord's family to join us in giving thanks and praise to God and bearing God's creative and redeeming love to all the world. Welcome, welcome home. Baptisms are always such a gift because these little ones are, are gifts from God and remind us that our God is a God of life and love. So Miles, thank you for putting a smile on all of our faces today to remind us of just the goodness and greatness of God. And I thank you for this. This is such a celebration and a gift of joy. Blessings.
is from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 16. From that time on, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and undergo great suffering at the hands of the elders and chief priests and scribes, and be killed, and on the third day be raised. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, God forbid it, Lord, this must never happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan, you are a stumbling block to me, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Then Jesus told his disciples, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life must lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit them if they gain the whole world but forfeit their life? Or what will they give in return for their life? For the Son of Man is to come with his angels in the glory of his Father, and then he will repay everyone for what has been done. Truly I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hi, welcome to my house. Hope you don't mind if I do a little laundry. It's what we do here. You know, one of the strange gifts of COVID has been helping us feel more moved in here than we have. Moving to Colorado has been the hardest move that we've made since, gosh, I guess since T and I have been married. For some reason, it was just the most difficult. Maybe it was partly because we lived in Germany and we loved it. And it was really hard to let that go and to grieve that time. Or maybe it was because our time before this was spent kind of in a wilderness. We were a little homeless and unemployed. And that was just hard. And it was hard to move from that situation and land somewhere and feel at home. Or maybe it was because we had originally planned on moving back to the southeast, back to where we have friends, colleagues, people that I went to camp with and seminary and college. And out here, we just don't know as many people. But for whatever reason, even though we've lived here for two years, we've just, it's just taken us a while to feel at home. So one of the things that COVID did for us, one of the things that we have liked about this time is that it's forced us to pay attention to our house. We've lived here for two years, but you know, as it is when you move into any place, it never quite feels like yours at the start. We, we began with maybe patching some things in the backyard and then we, we redid the deck and stripped and restained it, power washed some things. My wife painted some trim around the house. We got a new oven, things like that. And it's funny, and in doing those things, even just moving some furniture around, it's been, well, it's made us feel more settled. It's made us feel more like ours. It makes it feel a little bit more like this is our place. It's more like us. I feel a little more at peace. I don't feel so much like I'm going home to somebody else's house. Our text today makes me think about this in, in kind of a funny way. It's the story of Peter. It's one of my favorite stories in the Bible, to be honest with you. It's great. Because anything that stars Peter, you know that it stars somebody who's going to be saying something dumb. That seems to be Peter's M.O. You have to know last week's text to make sense of this one. Last week was when Peter, Jesus was walking to uh, Caesarea Philippi. And along the road to Caesarea Philippi, there's all of these... Uh, uh, statues to gods and so I can imagine Jesus seeing these statues with all these names of gods and and Jesus saying to his disciples well who do people say that I am and they say well some say you're John the Baptist back from the dead some say Elijah some say a prophet and then Jesus asks them who do you say that I am and it's Peter that speaks up and Peter says something smart he says, well, you're the Messiah, the son of the living God. 
And Jesus says, Well, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for the world has not revealed this to you, but God has revealed this to you. And from now on, I'm not going to call you Simon. I'm going to call you Peter, the rock. And on this rock, I will build my church. Man, imagine your rabbi giving you that kind of praise. Even to the point that people still believe that maybe the church was built on Peter as the first. But that only makes sense if you look at this week's text. Because then it goes on from the exact same story, the exact same time, where he goes, Jesus then says, and then he immediately begins to share with them that the Son of Man is going to go, Son of Man being code for Jesus, is going to go into Jerusalem, and there he's going to be crucified. And Peter does what any good friend would do. Peter says, no, son, God forbid. I mean, if any one of you had a friend who said, I'm going to go somewhere and and it's there that I'm going to be killed, you would probably say, don't go. That's a terrible idea. It's, it's just the most logical thing that Peter could do in this moment. But Jesus responds by saying, get behind me, Satan. Get behind me, tempter. Get behind me, uh, one who's trying to distract me from, from the ways in which I'm supposed to be in the world. Think about it. A few breaths before, Jesus says, I'm going to build my whole church on you. And then in a few steps, Jesus calls Peter, you are a stumbling block to me. You're that little rock that I trip over and it breaks my ankle. You're the crack in the sidewalk. You're that little pebble. And on this, I will build my church. To me, it brings me a lot of peace to think about Peter this way. That Peter is both at the same time the one the one on whom everything we know about who God is is, and the community of God living together is going to be built on this Peter. And then in the next breath, in the next sense, it's the same thing that gets in our way. Same thing that, well, we trip over, we stumble over. When we think about building our houses, it's really we're living into this interesting place, two places. One of these is like in Christ, that, that person in us, that little Peter in us that for those moments gets it and says, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. And it's the exact same person, the exact same place that's in crisis, that when they face the things they don't want to, shout out, no, God forbid. At the same time, in Christ and in crisis, When we think about the homes we build and the houses that we live in, I know we can feel often between both of those things. That our homes can feel a place of comfort, rest, joy. It can also be the place in which maybe a space of pain, a space in which we're not all that comfortable. For most of us, it can be both of those at the same time. I'd say the same thing is for like the inside of us, that what we all really just want is to come home and to feel at peace with ourselves, to feel that wholeness, to to build and work on that space in us that wants things to feel all right. But yet we still run into that crisis. We still run into that. It's the in Christ that desires the fullness and wholeness of all things. And it's that crisis in us that we often facing the very thing that we want to, we say, God forbid. So maybe thinking today about your homes, where is your home? Maybe your physical home, but then maybe also where is your home? Where do you feel like you are in Christ? Where do you feel that sense of that wholeness and fullness? Where do you feel that the vision that God has for all things is being made whole and full? I see that when I cuddle with my kids on the couch or when we go for a walk together or simply sitting in my backyard and enjoying a space that I worked on so that I could feel at peace. And where do you feel in crisis? Where are you struggling? For us, it's figuring out how to do school from here. It's figuring out how to to balance 
work and life and play in a, in a time of COVID. It's, it's trying to figure out our work and our roles and our lives and our vocations and our jobs when everything feels up in the air and feels in crisis. We're living both of those things. Jesus has a word for us in that. He says, if you really want to find your life, you have to deny yourself and follow in the way of Jesus. I know that in crisis, I want to manage, I want to fix, I want to explain, I want to work on it. But what I hear Christ saying to me is that when I come to that crisis, when I want to respond out of fear, when I want to manage and control, what I have to do is just lean into Christ, to lean into this time, even if it's not what I want to hear, even when I don't want COVID, even when I don't want this thing, to lean into that and ask God to make a home in me to make a place in me so that the fullness of all things can come, to put myself aside for a moment, my needs, my wants, my desires, and ask God, where, where can I be in Christ with you? Show me how to live this time in Christ. Help me deny the fear. Help me to put away the systems and structures that, that, that are in place that I use to, to perpetuate the things that you don't want. The very thing that Christ wanted, Peter couldn't see yet. So open my eyes like you're opening Peter's eyes to deny myself. Build a home in me again. My prayer for each of you is to make your home in the God who loves and knows you. To turn off maybe the TV for a little bit, to to shut down the barking voices that that want you to respond out of fear, anxiety, and pain. And instead, take a moment and say, but where are you, Christ? Where can I live and be in you? What are you calling to do? And where can you make and dwell and build a home in me? If you'll pray with me. God, you make in each of us your dwelling place. You don't need to go anywhere special or particular to find you, for you are already present in us. And God, in us, we feel that presence, we feel that goodness, and we've glimpsed that rain. And God, at the same time, we find the ways in which we deny you. And so we ask for your forgiveness for the ways in which we don't see, we don't understand, and we can't capture your vision for the world. We ask that you build in us new ways of seeing and being. God, protect us in this time. Strengthen us in this time. Help us use this time to build the home that you desire for us. And God, for all those people around us who are seeking a home, who are not at peace, who are seeking that that spiritual home of life, use us to bring a note of good news and peace. Send us as your ambassadors, as your construction workers, to help them build homes that look and feel and dwell in you. God, for all these things and for whatever else we need, we pray in the name of love, whose name is Jesus. Amen. This is for the busted hearts This is for the question marks This is for the outcast soul Lost control, no one knows Sing it for the can't go back Sing it for the broken past Sing it for the just found out Life is now upside down If you're looking for hope tonight, friend
because we dwell in you. Help us to be people of hospitality, welcoming others, helping them to find home. Make our homes, make our places where we live, places of peace, healing, reconciliation, comfort, renewal. Aid us as we seek to, to create space for all people. Whoever's out there on their own, Lord, we pray that you uh, lead us to them, that you help us to find those who are homeless, who have been pushed to the fringe, who have been left out, who are lonely, and use us to bring them comfort and love. Lord, we, we pray now for those who are sick, those in need of our prayers. Hear now the names of those for whom we want your intervention. And Lord, just as Jesus was always willing to welcome the stranger, help us to welcome the stranger. Help us to be willing to, to uh, listen to hear from those who are different from ourselves, those who see life differently than we do. Hear now our prayers for the sake of our nation, our community, and the world. All of these things we pray trusting in your mercy and in your love through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And now we invite you to share peace with those in the room with you. If you're by yourself, we invite you to text or send a message to someone saying, peace be with you. Also, as we now prepare for our communion, we want to remind you to exercise your generosity by giving your gift here through Abiding Hope. You can do that through uh, the page if you're live streaming. You can do that through the, the vehicle we're using for that. Or you can just go to the Abiding Hope website, go to give, and you can give your offering there. Your generosity matters. We have given away over $200,000 this year to partners locally and across the, the globe because people are in need. You know that. So please be generous. The night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, and broke it. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom. 
teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. As always, everyone is welcome to share in God's feast. This is God's table, not our table. God is the host, and God invites all to the feast. So, this is the time when, if you're at home with, with your family or with friends, you can distribute communion to one another. But if you're there by yourself, I'm going to say the words to you. This is the body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. All are welcome at the feast, where the gifts of God are free. strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. The crisis that surrounds us today gives us the opportunity to dive deeper into our identity as children of God. We are called to be Christ and in Christ in all situations. So go be the heart, hands, and feet of Jesus in the world. Love God, serve God. Love all, serve all. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.
strong.